Good evening. In Colossians 3, chapters 12, verses 12 to 17, the focus is on the new life that we are sharing with one another. We've, each one of us have been planted into Christ. We've been made members of God's household. And therefore, we have a, a shared identity. We are part of one another. Unfortunately, we all have a lot of experience in living as individuals, living independent and self-focused lives. Just go read through verses 5 to 11 of this chapter, and you'll see how well-versed we are in living for ourselves. We need to be taught and admonished in the new way of living, of living with one another. We need answers to questions like, what does it mean to be one, part of God's chosen people? What does qualities like compassion and kindness and hum humility really mean and entail in our lives? What does it mean to forgive one another and to be patient with one another? In short, we need an answer to the question of who Jesus is and what he has done for us and how we are transformed by it. Now this answer to the answer to this question is in a sense so so clear so simple that most of the really small children in our congregation can already give some form of answer to this question of who he is and what he has done for us and yet there's a richness in who Jesus is and what the gospel teaches that brings us to the realization that we'll actually never be able to express it all and understand it all and get it all in this life. Just think of that wonderful hymn that is sung about Christ as the Son of God in Colossians chapter 1, where Christ is described as the one who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all of creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things altogether. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on a cross. If we stop just for a moment and focus on this song, we see that most everything that is said here is actually more than what we could ever understand in this life. And yet, the mystery is that the Holy Spirit brings each believer to some understanding of what is said here. Each believer can say, I know who my Lord Jesus Christ is. I know that he stands at the center of everything and everyone. I understand what is said here. A wonderful gift that God gives us to not only understand, but to also express these wonderful things that he says about himself, is through the songs that he gives us to sing. In this way, he gives us words to, to speak and to express things that is actually way above our own understanding. We express it to him in songs of worship and, and praise, but we also express it to one another, speak to one another when we sing together. And in singing together, we teach one another. We, in teaching one another songs, we give each other words to, to express, to speak about our faith. In singing together, we are teaching one another and admonishing one another. We also teach and admonish one another when we speak with thankfulness in our hearts about who our Lord is and what He has done for us. The same Lord that all of us are serving and worshipping. Very few of us, actually none of us, are able to give a, a deep and comprehensive theological answer to every question there is about who God is or what He has done or the effects of the gospel on our lives. 
And yet, this shouldn't bring us to a place where we shy away from speaking to another, one another as if we have no knowledge, no understanding of who Jesus is. Because each one of us who can say that Jesus Christ is my Lord has a message, has something to say about why He is my Lord and Savior. And when I speak to my brothers and sisters about Him in this way, I'm giving small steps in teaching and admonishing my brothers and sisters and being taught and admonished by them. And in this way, we all get a deeper insight in the gospel. We can come to a place where I say, I can get it. I got it. I understand the gospel. And in this way, the message of Christ can dwell in us richly, in us and among us, to the glory of our, of our Heavenly Father. Good evening.